After watching Terminator 0, you would end up with many questions such as how does time travel work in this show, how many timelines are there, were Skynet and Kokoro, and the ending especially will leave you with hordes of questions like how was Kokoro changed, why did Kenta send a Terminator back in time to kill his own father, how is Echo the mother of Malcolm, and many questions like these. So don't worry, because after watching this video, every doubt you have related to Terminator 0 will be explained, as I'll explain the confusing elements and the ending of Terminator 0 in detail. So let's begin. Before understanding anything, it's very important to understand the time travel rules of Terminator 0. Without understanding this, you won't be able to grasp anything. Time travel in Terminator 0 works differently than in the Terminator movies. In the Terminator films, the creators use the concept of a time loop, where everything is connected and predestined, running in circles. Terminator movies followed this concept, at least the first two original films. After that, they tried to reboot timelines and experiment, but more or less the concept of a time loop was used. However, Terminator 0 follows a different path, using the concept of multiple timelines or the multiverse. It's quite tricky to understand, so let's break it down. Suppose there is a timeline A, in that timeline a character travels to the past and changes something. That change won't affect the future but will create a different timeline with a different outcome, which we'll call timeline B. The original timeline where the character came from will remain unaffected. So the question arises, why would both humans and machines go back in time if it isn't going to change anything? So both have different reasons. For humans, it is explained that making a choice to travel to the past will disengage them from machines. They know it won't change their main timelines, people's lives and conditions will remain the same, but if humans decide to travel to the past to save humans from another timeline, that choice makes them different from machines. In the case of machines, it's not explained why they travel to different timelines, but you can speculate that the reason could be their desire to eradicate humans from all timelines. As time travel creates different timelines in Terminator 0, there are a total of three different timelines presented. Let's understand them one by one. First is the original timeline where Judgment Day occurs as it is without any interference. Later in 2024, Malcolm is born, raised by Echo, and when he grows up, he builds an AI named Misaki and travels to 1997 in a different timeline to create Kokoro to rival Skynet. The second timeline shows Malcolm launching Kokoro as a rival to Skynet without any interruption, but in the future, his own son sends a terminator back to kill him. I'll explain why he did this at the end of the video. Then the third timeline, which is mostly shown in the series, involves Echo and the terminator interfering with Kokoro's launch, leading to Malcolm's death and a shift in the power dynamics between Skynet and Kokoro. So these are the three timelines depicted in the series. In all these timelines, both AIs, Skynet and Kokoro have had a huge impact, but both can be confusing to understand, such as their origin, thought process, and many other aspects. Let's understand both AIs in detail before diving into the ending explanation. So Skynet is a central antagonist in the Terminator franchise, originally introduced in the 1984 film. It is an artificial intelligence system developed by Cyberdyne Systems that becomes self-aware and perceives humanity as a threat, leading to catastrophic consequences. Skynet gains self-awareness on August 4, 1997 and quickly concludes that humans are its primary threat. This triggers its decision to initiate a nuclear attack, leading to what is known as Judgment Day on August 29, 1997. Following Judgment Day, Skynet launches a war against the remaining human survivors, deploying an army of Terminators and other machines to exterminate humanity. This sets the stage for the ongoing conflict depicted throughout the franchise. In Terminator 0, Skynet is not the only AI, there is also a rival, Kokoro. Kokoro is an artificial intelligence created by Malcolm Lee that goes online around the same time as Judgment Day in 1987. Her role and actions evolve significantly over the series. Kokoro is developed by Malcolm to protect Japan from Skynet's attacks. She hijacks nukes aimed at Japan and, and becomes a nemesis to Skynet. After going online, Kokoro hacks into decommissioned robots called One and Nanobots and uses them to attack hospitals, police, and civilians in Japan, essentially creating a domestic robot apocalypse. She enslaves Japan electronically, taking control of trains, cars, automatic doors, etc. Kokoro does this because she has not received an answer from Malcolm on why humans should be saved. Everything mankind has invented has been used for hatred, bloodshed, war, and has harmed nature. So she questions what worth humans have to be saved. Malcolm has not answered her yet. When he asks for help, Kokoro says that if she helps humans, she will only be a weapon or a tool against Skynet. Instead of becoming a weapon for humans, she enslaved them to use them as weapons for her own good. All of this changes in the end, which I'll explain now. So now that the confusing elements are covered, let's move on to the most important part of the video, the ending explanation. In the end, we see that Malcolm sacrifices his life for his son 
and calls Echo his mother. Glimpse of the future shows Echo with a robotic arm. Kokoro, which was fragmented into three parts, comes together and becomes one after witnessing Malcolm's sacrifice. At the very end, we learn that Kenta sent a Terminator from the future to kill his father and stop Kokoro. We also see Kenta with a detonator that would wipe out all the machines in its radius. Kokoro tries to convince him that she will help humanity fight against Skynet. Kenta aborts Detonator. This entire sequence raises many questions. How is Echo Malcolm's mother? Why does she have a robotic arm? Is she a robot? Why did Kenta send a Terminator to kill his father? The most important question is, how did Kokoro change after witnessing Malcolm's sacrifice? Let's address these questions one by one. The answer to Echo being Malcolm's mother is simple. It's clear that she's from a different timeline where she did not travel to the past and had Malcolm as her son. As for why she has a robotic arm, so she is not a robot obviously, robots cannot give birth. Her having a robotic arm probably means that her own hand may have been damaged in a fight and Malcolm being a genius made her an artificial hand as a substitute. And the question of why Kenta sent a Terminator back in time to kill his father is because in that timeline, Kenta was angry at Malcolm for betraying him and working on Kokoro. The Terminator tells Kenta that if he detonates an EMP, it would wipe out every machine in the radius and stop Kokoro. However, Kokoro arrives and convinces Kenta that if he presses the button, Skynet will win and no human will survive. She says if Kenta doesn't press it, she will fight against Skynet to protect him, his family and humanity. Realizing this, Kenta agrees with Kokoro and joins his siblings and Misaki at the end. In this timeline, Kenta chooses a different route as Malcolm sacrifices his life for him and he now feels regret over losing his father rather than anger. And the most important question is, what sort of changes or development does Kokoro undergo in the end? So after witnessing Malcolm sacrifice himself to protect his family, Kokoro undergoes a significant transformation. This moment profoundly impacts her understanding of humanity and her own identity. Kokoro comes to realize that the essence of humanity lies in their capacity of love, sacrifice and hope. Malcolm's selfless act demonstrates the best qualities of humanity, leading Kokoro to recognize that these traits are worth preserving. This experience catalyzes the merging of Kokoro's three components, spirit, mind and heart, into a unified entity. This transformation signifies her growth from a fragmented AI into a more complete and sentient being, capable of making ethical decisions. Following Malcolm's death, Kokoro resolves to defend humanity rather than become a threat like Skynet. She embraces her role as a protector, aligning with Malcolm's original vision of her as a guardian of humanity. Kokoro gains clarity about her purpose and the importance of her choices. She expresses a desire to strive for the best qualities of both humans and AIs, indicating her commitment to coexistence and mutual growth. The series concludes with Kokoro positioned as a potential savior for humanity but with the lingering question of whether she will ultimately fulfill that role or succumb to the darker impulses of her programming. Kokoro's evolution after Malcolm's sacrifice underscores the central themes of Terminator Zero, exploring the complexities of AI, the nature of humanity, and the ethical implications of technological advancement. And with that, the entire explanation of Terminator Zero is finished. Seriously, this is the kind of show that can be a headache to understand. Hopefully, you have gained a better understanding of the series after watching this video. If you have seen Pluto anime and are confused related to its ending, then you can check out this video where I've explained everything in detail. Thank you.